Those are all the bulls, what am I seeing? I'm seeing right out there the handwriting on the wall. I'm seeing a scripture coming out of the nowhere. And there were letters were about this tall and coal black. And there it is coming out on the wall. Oh, God's dealing with the next man. God's dealing with the heathen. And I asked God to give me something I can understand. God opened my eyes, opened my understanding. Lord, I don't understand these things. It's too foreign to me. It's too different than anything I've ever been taught. And there the Lord began to bring this scripture. Repent! And by the way, Peter preached that great message on the day of Pentecost. Repent! Every one of you! And be baptized in the lovely name of Jesus. What for? The remission of your sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I tell you, folk, I didn't know anything about that scripture then. But oh, listen. As I on those elbows, my head up there, and I read what was on that wall. Now here I am. I've been asking God for a truth. And God, give me a revelation. Give me a fact so I can understand it. But you know, when God gave it to me, he only scared me to death. And what did I do? I'll tell you what I did. I come up off of that floor like a flash. I made a run up the stairway. And that time in the morning, I began hollering for my patient. I was calling her name. I wakened the whole house full of people. Oh, I did some awful things, some awful things I've done in my time. And you know, my patient got out of that bed as quick as she could. And I said, come downstairs real quick and look what's on the basement wall. And that woman who was the first one out of bed and down the steps, she comes about halfway down. And she leaned over the banister right here and I'm standing about right there. And I said, look what's on the wall. And you know, that woman looked and looked and looked some more. I didn't think she was ever going to say anything. And finally she turned to me and she said, honey, I don't see a thing. <laughs> Not a thing. <laughs> she didn't. Wasn't for her. Then you know what she did? She looked back at the wall. Then the tears began to roll down her face. Then she looked back up my face. And she said, Charlotte, that's for you. God showing you you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. Then through her tears she said, Honey, 23 years ago God revealed that truth to me and I refused to obey it. It's for you, Charlotte, and God's showing you. That woman wouldn't have had to open her mouth. She wouldn't have had to say a thing. They brought me back to church the next night and they set me down out here and set her eye like this. She sat with me. And you know, oh, folk, it was terrible what I'd done. Those were a crowd, maybe 200 people in that church. And you know, all of a sudden they were singing. And they were singing this song. I've never heard it. It's a Pentecostal song. Of course it was all foreign to me. And uh, they were singing the song, I'm one of them. I never heard that before. I know nothing about it. And I sat there and let them sing a little while. And then I tell you right now, spontaneously, I'm up out of that seat. They were sitting and singing. And I'm up out of that seat with both hands up in the air. And I'm crying out like this. Oh, wait a minute! Just as soon as you take me out on the Mississippi River and bury me in the lovely name of Jesus in water baptism, I'll be one of you and I can sing with you. Oh, I ruined the service. I mean, I ruined the service. But they understood. All right. Twenty-four years ago, the ninth day of March on Easter Sunday. I don't blame you for laughing. It was horrible, some of the things I've done. But anyway, God knows all about it. And you know what they did? They took me out in the Mississippi on the ninth day of March. Of March Easter Sunday, there was a blizzard on. It was bitter cold. They took me out in the icy waters of the Mississippi River, and there they buried me in the lovely name of Jesus in water baptism. Let me say to this congregation, that's why I got the healing for my body. Oh, God healed this body. It was a marvelous healing I received out in those icy waters. And I was half scared to death because on the bank, Oh, so many people were standing there, and I knew I had been going to that St. Pisa, St. Uh, Mike's Cathedral there for goodness, all the time I'm nursing there. Yeah, but many people knew me, and I was so frightened. But you know, my clothes froze on me when I come out of that water. We had to ride three miles to get to my patient's home. No, I didn't get a sniffle. I didn't get sick. Of course not. I'm obeying the Word of God. All right, now they're bringing me back to church again. They brought me over here on the second row and set me right there with my patient. And this night after the preliminary, preliminaries are over, Sister Nyla had played and sang. That little girl started preaching again. She's preaching a different message. She's preaching on the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I don't have the Holy Ghost then. Oh, listen, folks. I only waited a little while. I don't think five minutes. 
And I said to the man, I was starting to cry. And my patient said, Charlotte, what's wrong? And I said, I wish she'd sit down and shut up. I don't want to hear anymore. <laughs> I just couldn't take it. I, uh, after all, I'd never heard a woman preacher, and it was hard on me. And she said, you sit there and listen. And she didn't want me to go outside, and I didn't want to offend her. I sat there and listened to that girl preach on the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And what a beautiful message she preached. On and on. Ah, oh, let me say to you. Will I ever forget before Sister Nala finished that message? But I cried through most of the message. All right, but I was sitting over there. And after the services were over, and I said to my patient, do you think that pastor would get mad if I went up again and asked him for all the scriptures in the Holy Bible on the baptism of the Holy Ghost? And oh, no, she said he'd be delighted to give them to me. He was. He went in his office and brought me out 39 scriptures on a sheet of paper. And I said, let's go home. We went home. I went right back to the basement and laid that broken Bible on the chair. I got right down on my knees and I said, now God, did you hear what she said tonight? And I proceeded to tell God everything I could remember, the sister now the priest. And I said, God, I don't know anything about the Holy Ghost. The only Holy Ghost I know anything about is we have a church they call the Holy Ghost Church in the Roman Catholic element. But I don't know what it's all about. And oh God, if the Holy Ghost is not for me, don't give it to me. Lord, shut every door, don't give it to me. I don't want it. But oh God, if the Holy Ghost is for me, then God, you show me it's for me. I want everything that you have for me, but I don't understand what this is all about. Oh, listen, folks, I'm down there again on my knees, and I don't know when I got down this time either, but God knows all about it. And you know, all of a sudden I am lying flat on the floor again, and there, all of a sudden I come up on those elbows, and what am I seeing? God's laying hanging scripture. The other scripture was gone, it wasn't even on the wall the next night. And here God is hanging another scripture. He's giving this to a next nun. And this scripture was coming out there as plain as could be on the wall, and this is what it was. Call no man your father upon this earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. From that day to this, I've never addressed a priest as father. Neither shall I. I was a heathen back there, but now this is true. It's coming for God. Oh, listen, folks, I was so touched. I got up off of the floor. I walked back there, and I was reading that and weeping, and I was thanking God for all of that. And I said, oh, God, you're so wonderful. I understand it, Lord. I'm accepting it. And while I stood there just like that, it went off of the wall. It was gone right in front of my very eyes. But God wasn't through yet. God's going to give me some other scriptures. And then this scripture come on the wall. I've been taught all my life to believe the Virgin Mary is the Queen of Heaven. She's the gateway to Heaven. And I don't know any better. I have accepted all of that. All right, now God's trying to show me something. And He hung the scripture out there in space. Uh, Jesus speaking, by the way. Jesus said, I, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, not by the priest, not by the Pope, not by the Virgin Mary, but by Jesus Christ that was for me. And I went through my tears, I read it, and I thanked the Lord for it. And I was standing there weeping. And then God, it just slipped off of that wall just like that, it's gone. Just like it came, it went. All right, now God's writing another one up there. I'll put this scripture for me. And I want you to listen carefully to some of them. I hope it hasn't slipped my mind. Jesus, again speaking, of course. Jesus said, I am the door, not the Virgin Mary. I believe the Virgin Mary was the door and the gateway to heaven. Jesus said, I am the door, and there is hanging the scripture out there. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Listen, folks, this is truth for being revealed to me, a heathen. And I tell you right now, I have never heard these truths before, know nothing about them. And through my tears, I'm thanking God for that beautiful truth. And I said, God, I will accept it. All right, he disappeared, and he's hanging another one out there. And this is the scripture he put out there for me this time. Behold, I, Jesus Christ, stand at the door and knock. What door? The door of your heart. If any man hear my voice and open the door of your heart, Jesus said, I will come in. Oh, I never heard anything like that before in my life. And let me tell you, through my tears, I was weeping. Oh, how I went. I spent the most of the bad night in that basement. All right, now they're going to take me back to church another night. And the next night when... That day had been a hectic day. That day was a day when seven priests had made calls to my patient's home. They had already heard about me going to the altar in a Pentecost church, and they know too much that I know, and they know that I know too much. 
and they were very concerned about me and when they'd come to my patient's home she wouldn't go to the door she made me go to the door and they threatened me and they said a lot of very unlovely things to me uh, why because they know I know too much all right and I was half scared to death of course and on and on it went and so that day I had cried most all day long and when evening time come my patient was got, had gotten dressed was all ready and she looked at me and I wasn't dressed and she said Charlotte aren't you going to church tonight I said oh no I'm not going she wanted to know why I said well look at me my eyes are all bloodshot and my face is swollen I've cried all day and she said honey this is the day God wants to do something special for you you run and get dressed I run in that bedroom and put on my clothes and I went to church with my patient that night and this night sister not after the preliminary is over while well, Sister Nile is preaching another message. She's preaching crucifixion on the cross. Folk, that girl just preached a little bit. And I didn't even say to my patient, I'm going out and sit in the car. I got up and I was going. I just didn't feel I could take anymore. And my patient grabbed a hold of my clothes and she said, where are you going? And I said, I want to go out and sit in the car. I don't want to be in here any longer. And of course I was weeping. She said, honey, please sit down. And you know you don't want to be rude. I knew enough not to be rude. And I said, oh, she wanted to know I was crying so hard. And I said, I'll tell you, every time I come back in this church, you tell me I need something else. When am I going to get saved? I want to get saved. That's what I went there for, to get saved. And I don't understand why you every night you come, you tell me something else. Well, when do you get saved? All right, I was very disturbed about it because I am a heathen. And you know, but I sat there patiently and listened to Sister Nile. But oh, she went in a little deeper into that message affection on the cross. I cried hysterically through that service. I tell you, I told you the other night, I learned to hate that old Roman cross just like I hate Satan. Oh, I told you how they burned the crosses on my bare back. I told you how they made me lick the crosses on the cement floor with my tongue till it would bleed. I told you that. I told you we have no hair on our head. Every three months the clippers put on our heads are bald and they take our head gear off and they put the crown of thorns on our head and then they hang that heavy cross on my shoulder and they make me try to make me drag that heavy cross as Jesus dragged that cross here on earth. We imitate the passions and the sufferings of our lovely Jesus as he walked here on earth. And I didn't have any food in my stomach. My backbone seemingly was laying against my uh, stomach against my backbone. And I didn't have strength enough and I would fall. And um, you know, when I'd fall, she'd pour cold water on me and put me back on my feet and still make me drag that cross. Oh, it was terrible. I learned to hate that cross. And I had to prostrate myself at it so many times. Oh, I learned to hate it with all the hate that I had in me. And here's this little girl standing up here and uh, preaching on the cross. Well, I just could not grasp the significance of her message. And my patient said, honey, sit right there and listen because I think you will get the significance in a few moments as she gets into the message. Don't worry, I did. And Sister Nala got a little deeper into that message and began to tell how Jesus went to Calvary and how he died, how he shed every drop of blood in his, uh, in his body and how he died for you and I that we might have this one wonderful experience we have. Oh, then I really wept, and I kept on weeping. And then, you know, after she was through preaching, she come down off of the platform and stood right down there. And she said, I want the congregation to stand. There were three aisles of people. I want everybody to stand. And they did. And then she said, I want everybody in this building. First you start from here. I want you to start marching. I want everybody, Satan Center, I want you to march. I want you to march by here and shake my hand. You that want to kneel at the altar, you kneel and pray. You that want to go back and sit down on your seats and go back and sit down. And I'd like to say to this congregation, that's the most obedient church I've ever been in since I've been saved. Every sinner in that building walked. Every sinner in that building, not one sinner sat on a seat back there. No rebellion, no stubbornness. All right, what happened? Fifty-two people, counting myself, was at the altar. Thirteen of us were Roman Catholics at the altar that night. What a revival. Ah, uh, listen, now the middle aisle comes. Now the back over here is coming. I'm sitting right over there with my patient. And don't you know I have come walking out of my seat now. It's time for me to come. And as I walked up, I was going to shake her hand just like the rest of the folk did. But you know, as I reached out to shake, uh, shake Sister Nyla's hand, she said, aren't you going to pray? That's all. Just, aren't you going to pray? Oh, I fell on my knees right there. And then I began to talk to God. I said, oh God, I don't have the Holy Ghost. God, I don't have it. I want it tonight. 
And I told God, I, what I would do, I'll go where you send me. I'll do anything in the world you want me to do, Lord. I'll be what you want me to be. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll do what you want me to do. God, I can't give you anymore. I've already given me heart, my heart, and that's all I have. But God, I'll lay even my heart and lay myself on that altar again. Just fill me with your spirit. You know, he left me on my knees only about eight minutes when God took a hold of his lips of clay and he began to speak through me in that heavenly language that only my God can speak. I received the same experience a hundred and twenty and the Virgin Mary received in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. Oh yes, I received the same experience. It was beautiful. Oh, so beautiful. But now I'm going to have to take you back a little ways to explain something to you. I'm going to take you back to the day when they first got me back in the United States and I told you to rush me right into a hospital and I lay in that hospital three and a half months. All right, when they brought me home, they'd operated on my hip again and I couldn't walk and they brought me home in the ambulance and when they carried me in and set me down in a chair, a reclining chair in Dad's living room, I was sitting there now. My family, they were...